Well, thank you very much for staying. Welcome to this wunderbar Wednesday. It's midweek, and of course, we are doing what we do best on the AM show here to serve you. Anyway, before we get into it, let me just let you know, as always, that Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic is helping us bring you this uh, segment. And what are they offering you? If you're a man, prostate screening for free. If you're a woman, fertility screening of whatever shape for free. Here's where you can locate them. They are Spintex opposite the Shell signboard. Then there's Kumasi, Kronomabwe here behind uh, the Angel Educational Complex. There's Takra Dianaji State, Tema Community 22, Techi Manhanswa, and Esiaman Zama. Their call lines 0244 867 068 or 0274 234 321. Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, the end to chronic disease. And, um, a good way to kickstart with Sweetie Abochi, my co-host. But now uh, I'm pleased to bring you a political scientist and director of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana, Dr. Kwame Asasante. Doc, good morning. Mimawachi. Yaura, Yaura. Good morning, my brother. <laughs> How are you? By God's grace, we're well. I hope you're well too. I'm very well. All right. Very As always, I'm going to give you about two minutes to, to talk about any topical matters uh, that are of concern to you. Two minutes, two and a half minutes. Over to you, Doc. I mean, there are so many issues, but I notice that yes. usually when I, I try to bring in the issues, you have something already on your mind. So you go ahead. Oh, yes. I'm throwing it to you. Oh, yes. mm. Today, I want to look at this um, issue of Ghana um, cocoa board allowing companies to uh, import what they call, uh, you know, less premium uh, cocoa beans to come and uh, support what they get from the country uh, to produce uh, chocolate and other commodities for us. Um, I must say that I was highly disappointed when I read uh, the uh, press release, particularly so when they talk about the fact that, hey, um, uh, that propaganda uh, is not the best for the country and the rest of them, and that the practice has been uh, with us for the past 20 years. Come on, come on. This is a country that every dollar counts. This is a country that we need all resources in terms of foreign currency to be able to do other business. And you are allowing companies uh, to import from our neighboring countries, such as what Togo, such as Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, all right, what you call less premium cocoa. It has not occurred to any of those who manage these things on our behalf to encourage our farmers to produce the non-premium cocoa. Come on. They must be ashamed of themselves. Because, look, we are importing this, what they call the non-premium. Yet we have arable lands that can help us to produce these things so that we will not import. That has not what occupied their attention. That all that they are interested in that. Oh, yeah, let them import. Let them import. Uh, if we don't stop this, a time will come, you and I will import. We will be importing and telling the world that, oh, the Gakwenke is the premium and that we want uh, a certain less quality one to come and augment what we have here. It's a very shameful act. And I, I, I take it with a pinch of salt and that they should come again. They should come again. They should come again. They should be putting, you know, measures in place so that what people, are, the other companies are importing to come and support what we have here, we are able to produce so that our money will not go anywhere. I think that should be the focus. But what they are telling us and they think that is the best press release, I throw it into the lake of fire. It is nothing to write home about. I am so disappointed that in Chromas Ghana, it doesn't matter the type of cocoa we are importing. We are importing a certain type of cocoa beans into this country. And we are proud that the practice has been with us for the past 20 years. Come on, leaders of this organization, please ensure that we have value for money. That is my message this morning. All right. So interesting. But of course, uh, you've seen and, and it, it appears you've read part of what Coco Boss said in reply that this has been a longstanding practice and that w what they say is that you cannot produce premium cocoa and sell premium cocoa altogether. 
you must blend it with other less premium cocoa. So sometimes you would notice that um, I remember in Cuba, I was so excited when I saw um, chocolate at, at, at a certain uh, part of that country, which said that it had some percentage of Ghanaian cocoa or cocoa made from Ghana. So usually they would blend. It wouldn't be like all premium Ghanaian cocoa. That's the explanation they give. So they are getting some from Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, and blending it with with our own uh, premium product. Uh, what, what do you say to that? I, I know you've addressed it in a way, but have you averted your mind to that aspect, that angle as well? Hello, Doc. All right, we seem to have a, conne a connection issue with uh, Dr. Kwame Asasanti. We'll get it rectified and then take it from uh, there. Of course, many of you have shared your concerns on that particular um, issue as well, saying that, I mean, I remember, for example, some minority members in parliament, if, if, if memory serves, um, Roxon Nelson, Dafia Makbo, among others, saying that now we have to import cocoa and, and all of that in respect of bringing it in. I know that sometimes it's the whole thing, premium Ghanaian cocoa, but I also know that sometimes these blends happen. I'm not an expert in that, but like I said, I've seen in instances where maybe they'll tell you um, part of this chocolate is, is the composition, 30% premium cocoa from Ghana or something of the sort, or 70%. Um, so that's, that's, that's what I wanted Doc to uh, respond to. But we'll try to get him back and then uh, see what he has to share on those matters. Uh, the major papers I'll be getting into today, the Daily Graphic newspaper, the Ghanaian Times, the Daily Guide, and the new Finder uh, newspaper. Let me get to the headlines in here, and then we shall have a bit of a discourse on those. In the interim, if you've listened to what Dr. Kwame Asasanti said, just share, send me uh, your thoughts via the live stream on Facebook. That is uh, Joy News on Facebook. Just get on there. It's very easy. Just go to Facebook, key in Joy News. You'll find our major platform there. Um, and then you can get onto the live feed as we're having it now. You can stream. And then let me know what you think. Uh, not just about that, but about some of the other issues uh, of, of national concern. Some of the issues we'll be discussing here. Uh, do we have Dr. Kwame Asasanti back? All right. All right. So... <clears throat> the first story, rent scheme, and I'm starting with the Daily Graphic newspaper. Rent scheme benefits 1,492 tenants. Uh, 19 million Ghana cities disbursed to six regions. That's according to uh, the housing minister, Francis Asenso Bwache. Uh, there's also government Chinese forge infrastructure delivery partnership. And then PAC orders Ministry of Food and Agriculture to pay bird flu affected farmers and uh, university unions strike over unresolved grievances uh, this a matter that i know <clears throat> doc would likely uh want to respond to doc welcome back thank you all right before i go over the headlines um uh i i, was, I put a question to you i don't know whether you got the question no it started and then the line trip so if you can uh, you know bring right. it back so in simple terms, I was also saying that I'm sure you've been to some parts of the world and seen a chocolate where yeah. you would see written on it maybe 30%, 50%, 60%, 70% premium cocoa from Ghana. What sure. it means is they've used that chunk of cocoa from Ghana and the rest yeah. of it is other stuff. And I'm saying yeah. that while I agree with you, I mean, if we're doing premium, we can do premium, but there are also times when there are blends. So you don't use... Um, according to the, the cocoa board, you don't use all premium cocoa. You mix it up a bit. Uh, consider it this way. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate and reason from their end. Gold. Sure. Usually, you wouldn't have gold in 24 carats, right? Um, yeah. That is the purest form. Yeah. And uh, usually, you would, those ones are used for ornamental value. So you are something that will not be worn or used because gold is very soft. It's, it's a soft metal. Um, so you would want to mix it with maybe copper, where it would look more red, or maybe silver, where it would look a bit more white, okay? Yeah. Uh, so 18 carats, I think, is about 
75% gold. So, so I'm just thinking along those lines. You don't usually find people using 24 karat uh, gold. What, what, do you, what do you say in that regard? I follow all that conversation. I do. Right. But I am saying that we are importing, allowing companies to import from right. places such as Cote d'Ivoire, such as Togo, Nigeria, Ecuador. Look at the sub-region, Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria. What is it that they have in their land, which we don't have, that we cannot produce that commodity that they need to add to what? The premium. That is all my deep. All right. And we continue to rely on the fact that it has been an industry practice and all that. What is it that these countries have in their land that enable them to produce that additional uh, you know, commodity that supports the premium to do what they are, they, they are doing? That is all. And if we say that we want to rely on that forever, then I disagree. I disagree vehemently that we can also produce it here so that we save ourselves a lot of our foreign exchange and all that. That is all my argument there is. All right. Uh, fair point uh, to make. Now let's get into the papers, Doc. Daily Graphic. Rent scheme benefits 1,492 tenants. University unions strike over unresolved grievances. Government Chinese Forge Infrastructure Delivery Partnership. And uh, we keep signing these and uh, you wonder what really we're looking for and what we're getting out of all of these. University Union strike over unresolved grievances. I've mentioned that. PAC, the Public Accounts uh, Committee, orders Ministry of Food and Agriculture to pay bird flu affected farmers. And when you look at some of the things that have come, come up as far as the Public Accounts Committee is concerned, it would make you wretch, make you puke, make you vomit. And all of this is going on. And I've had some conversations with members of parliament and said, maybe we should look at it, this retrospective action, where the, after the fact, the thing is done. And now you're trying to recoup money and trying to take people to court even after that. And sometimes the auditor general's department itself or the auditor general's is not exactly helpful because they are talking of retrospective this when contracts are ballooned beyond a certain uh, 60 percent and all of that. It, it makes nonsense of of the drive to root out corruption, my take and and speaking to the people at the very height of some of these things. On the back page, today's AFCON semi-final, South Africa, I revenge against Nigeria. And elephants to continue, roller coaster ride. So the elephants of Cote d'Ivoire will lock horns with the Democratic Republic of Congo. And of course, South Africa will play Nigeria. Uh, do you have any permutations for these matches? I know you, you, you love your football. Uh, let's start from, from that softer note and get to the hardest yes. stock. I love football, but I've told you in recent times, uh, because of what you and I are going through in terms of black South Africa, <laughs> I have decided to stay a little away from the team. I but, see. You've decided uh, to become a spectator, not a citizen. With the team. Uh, but uh, I don't want to die early of shock. <laughs> so, uh, when black stars are playing, I do something else. And when the glory comes, I come out and I also jubilate. But back to the issue, if you look at the teams that are going for the semi final, I think uh, this is the real decider. Uh, Nigeria and South Africa. That's going to be a cracker. I mean, um, I don't know the strength of uh, both teams now, but I know them to be football nations and that if they all have what it takes to be at this stage, then we should expect nothing but the best. Uh, if we go to the other, I'm forgotten about the other parents. Yes. Uh, 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 so are, there's Nigeria versus South Africa, and then there's DR Congo versus yeah, Cote d'Ivoire. Cote uh, d'Ivoire has been over the years been a very solid team and the same can be said about uh, you know Cote d'Ivoire uh, Cote d'Ivoire you recall um, the record between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire Cote d'Ivoire has dominated for a very long time I don't know the strength of their team now but if uh, it is what I uh, used to know uh, then uh, it can be another interesting encounter I believe that the two matches are going to give uh, Africa um, a lot of what attention in terms of the quality that we are going to display. That is if the standards are, uh, are the best that we can see. But look, if you look at all these things, uh, once my team is out, I always root for uh, Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire. They are my team uh, that, apart from Black Star, yes, uh, I wish them the best. Well. We wish all of them the best. And uh, once you're out, you don't have to have sour grapes. The others can go ahead 
and may the best team win. Uh, so let's get into some other stories. And um, <clears throat> the National Rental Assistance Scheme, set up to address the age-old challenge of rent advance payments, has disbursed 19 million Ghana cities to support individuals to pay for rent advance in six regions. The scheme, since March last year, has supported 1,492 beneficiaries as of January the 31st this year. On the average, the scheme supports over 200 beneficiaries a month, with an average monthly rent of 500 Ghana cities per beneficiary, renting for two years. The Minister of Works and Housing, Francis Hassan-Subwache, who discloses to the Daily Graphic, has said the rent assistance scheme was set up to go nationwide, or set to go nationwide, after its successful implementation in six regions over the past um, year. Now, four beneficiaries who spoke of the scheme <clears throat> and uh, who spoke to the Daily Graphic separately said it had been the best accommodation renting experience of their lives. My only question, who and who are getting these sums of money? Why? Why? Is it taking a political tincture. You know, this country, nothing is transparent. Yep. I would like to see the list of those who have got them and find out how many are not affiliated to a certain party and how many are not family and friends and how many are not this and that. You know where I'm going. But, but yep. anyway, it's helping Ghanaians. So, well, what can you say? Um, let, Doc, let me just come in with these two stories and then uh, you can come in with your... Nope responses um i'll go to page 13 now there you are so two stories the public accounts committee of parliament has given the ministry of food and agriculture a one-month ultimatum to compensate farmers whose farms were destroyed by the pathogenic uh, avian influenza disease in kumasi the ministry defaulted in paying compensation to the affected farmers after the ministry of finance had released 1.9 million Ghana cities for that purpose in 2015, 2018, and 2021, respectively. The 2022 Auditor General's report further revealed that only 191,730 Ghana cities was paid to 10 farmers, leaving 1.8 million Ghana cities unaccounted for. 1.8 million Ghana cities. Hopefully, Brian Achampong can give us some answers. And then this one that I know you'll definitely want to respond to. University unions strike over unresolved grievances in, in quotation marks. So multiple industrial actions have rocked public university campuses as different working groups strike over unresolved welfare issues, including pension contributions, vehicle maintenance allowances, and overtime payments. The striking groups are the Senior Staff Association of Universities of Ghana, the Federation of Universities Senior Staff Association of Ghana, the Teachers and Educational Workers Union of the Trades Union Congress, and the Ghana Association of University Administrators. And um, just to add to that, the National Labor Commission has, however, criticized the ongoing strikes, deeming them, quote, unmeritorious and potentially unlawful. Your reactions, Doc? Yeah. I will begin by looking at the rent scheme. I must uh, commend the government uh, because it was part of their manifesto uh, that when voted to office, they will do this. However small that it started, I am with them and I support that. It's a good cause and um, uh, it's also a good gesture. Um, I am also um, you know, supporting your position that if they really want this thing to serve the purpose for which it has been established, it is incumbent upon them to publish the list of those who have what, benefited from this so that we know that it's not going to party food soldiers, party boys and party apparatchiks, and that every well-meaning Ghanaian who is qualified will get it. Once they do that, then transparency is assured, then accountability will follow from there. And the confidence that Ghanaians have in this system will always be maintained. We think that, yes, they've done a good thing, but they should move it to what, another level, higher. And that is what, by publishing names of what, uh, all the beneficiaries of this uh, scheme, uh, which we think is a laudable one. And I want them to also gradually uh, expand it uh, so that uh, a lot of people can be captured and that is. Then I'll look at also the issue of unresolved grievances um, in the university, particularly among the unions. Um, it is always sad when you have government always reneging on its promise, uh, then you come back to 
uh, square one. Uh, it's not a good thing. Uh, it erodes uh, confidence that people have in government. So I will urge government that they, look, they should listen to the unions and then do the need for so that they all come back to work. If you look at campus now, it's completed <clears throat> with pills and all that. It's not uh, a good thing. And I'm sure that uh, the workers themselves are ready uh, to work. Um, I will also urge the workers uh, to also, um, you know, pay attention to all the calls and then be able to uh, speak uh, in such a way that at the end of the day, uh, there will be uh, a makeable solution to the problem so that they will all come back to support the core of building the human infrastructure for this country and all that. Yes, um, we want them to be able to fight and then fight for a good cause. But at the same time, we want them to also listen to the uh, direction of management uh, relative to some of the things that they do so that at the end of the day, all the stakeholders within the university community uh, will benefit from whatever action that one group takes and all that. Um, that is always uh, on my mind. And I, I expect them uh, to be so as to not to jeopardize uh, the academic system and also not to jeopardize the whole work that uh, they, we are all doing to uh, support Madagan. Uh, any grievance uh, on your mind, let them master the courage to sit at table and talk about There is nothing that can never be discussed and all that. Sir Francis Bacon has always given us an opportunity uh, to be able to benefit or to, to, to leverage on what? Dialogue. The dialogue makes what a better person. So they should be able to dialogue, uh, air their grievances, and also must be prepared to give and take so as to what? Allow this country to move on. We need uh, all groups on campus to be able to work and work well. I want to look at PAC. Uh, before, you, before you move on, I'm interested. Uh, the planned demonstration, will you partake in it? Uh, which one is that, please? Well, there's the one on February 13, and, uh, you know, the teaching unions as well have expressed uh, interest in joining those. Are you likely to join it? It's, uh, you know, on the back of the 15% VAT and then the whole bit about um, pensions and not sending them, some have said, expressed interest, that they would join this demonstration. Are you... Are you going to be joining them? Um, I have not uh, looked at the issues here uh, relative to the demonstration and all that. But we are saying that all that we are talking is that, yes, when somebody uh, has work and what is due him, you give the person. If you have promised, you are an employer, you have promised something, mm -hmm. deliver. And also, when you are also an employee, you know <coughs> what is also expected of you to do. When these things are met, I believe that um, uh, we will have... Uh, you know, a sanitized system. So whether uh, I'll be in the demonstration or out of it, the real issue is that whatever they are putting forward, is it worth, you know, understanding and is it worth uh, the while so that uh, our comments will go a long way to support or undermine it. So uh, for me, um, where I'll be uh, is not the real issue. Yes, the issue is that let us all the key players do what is expected so that at the end of the day uh, we will benefit from whatever enterprise we embark upon. Right, let me reframe the question just briefly. Um, do you think on the back of all these happenings it is justified to hit the streets to demonstrate on the back of this whether or not you are participating? Oh, the right to demonstrate um, is anchored in the constitution and is given to every human being who will use the processes, the procedures, as required by law. Once you satisfy that, you have the right to jump onto the street uh, forever. I mean, nobody uh, will worry you, provided you don't go against the rules of the game. That's fine. So whoever wants to exercise his right, um, I, am, I am not against it at all. The Constitution allows that. And what the Constitution allows, who am I? You say, I am against it. No. All right, let's get into some other stories. Senegal on the brink after elections postponed. You know uh, the Senegalese story. Now, yes. Senegal's reputation as a bastion of democracy in an unstable region is on the line after protesters clashed with riot police outside parliament last Monday. And I've been talking about this issue for days. I keep saying 
our leaders will remain mum, as though they couldn't speak. Huh? I'm not trying to be insulting to anybody. But once there's a fire in there, and maybe there's a military incursion, then you see them talking. What kind of hypocrisy is this in the sub-region? Including from our own president, the Nigerian president, who is now, I believe, chair of ECOWAS, and all the others. You keep quiet. What Makisal is doing is out of order. No one is calling him out. But should there be, God forbid, a military incursion? And Senegal is one, like the story says, one of the bastions of democracy. I've, I've forgotten, but there are some areas where they are, they are the foremost in dem democracy in the sub-region. And this is what is happening there. We're quiet. If there's a fire and escalation, then you see them and, and the military shouldn't this and the military shouldn't that. I think that is hogwash, but I don't know what you, you make of that situation. Yes, I think that I also have similar sentiments uh, that uh, our leaders sit down as if they have no responsibility and allow people to misbehave within the democratic space, right? If you go to the ECOWAS protocol on democracy and governance, all right, it is clear that six months to election, you don't do any major changes, all right? This, that you are suspending election, is a major change, and that is not good enough. We don't want to know, we don't want to hear about it. What are you doing? Some opposition members have been, you know, suspended, prevented from contesting and all that. You are setting the stage for chaos. And where are everyone leading? Are they on sabbatical leave? Are they alive? Do they see what is going on? The hypocrisy on the part of Ecuador's leaders has always brought us trouble. The inability, the, the ina inaction on their part uh, has always also created a problem for us. And also lack of vision is also what uh, the, the part of the problem that faces what Ecuador today. And that is why we are seeing all the troubles that we are. It is unfortunate that people fought and brought uh, this organization to life. And today, due to work, poor management, poor leadership, and bad decisions and all that, we are now having people who are threatening the block uh, to leave and the rest of them. It's unfortunate because what Makizao is doing here is, is on chess. It's nothing that we want to accept in a democracy when, you know, there are clear rules that govern what the conduct of every electoral process. And people have you know, prepare their minds that they are going to elect and they are going to the polls and elect their leaders. And in no time, you want to what, scuttle this dream. Please, Ecuador leaders, if you want to gain our respect, you want to gain our confidence, please act and act now. Because the military incursions, the military adventurism are too, one too many that we, want, we don't want a repeat of that. No, we don't want that. So let us fight for democracy through thick and thin, so that all these ugly practices, which, uh, you know, degenerate the democratic world agenda, we will be able to what, keep them away and maintain democracy. I know democracy uh, doesn't have all, uh, its, uh, <laughs> all the positive uh, dividends, but I can tell you, without your contradiction, that it is the best system of government, nothing more, nothing less. All that we need to do is to what, work within the framework and make sure that we bring everybody on board by what expanding on the frontiers of advocacy that right. supports the spread and letter of democracy. So, mm -hmm. Makizaw and Ho, please, please, let's say with this continent, we are getting one too many of such what irresponsible statements. I am not happy. All right. And other African parliaments are showing that they also know how to fight, uh, just as ours as did. Um, bipartisan border deal on brink of defeat, uh, that's uh, in respect of Washington's involvement, uh, Ukraine among others, Israel also. And then Turkey mourns last year's earthquake victims. And of course, we know how we lost our very own Christian uh, Akchu. The Ghanaian Times newspaper, Upper East Regional Minister fumes over shoddy work, snail pace of execution of projects. And then this one, tragedy, seven die, four injured in gory accident. Fuel tanker runs over minibus on Accra and Sawam Road. It piled into them. I hear there were about 15 people in there. And uh, the rhetoric is that uh, practically all of them have lost their lives. Uh, oh, and uh, this one will interest you. Forgive them. They don't know the power of love. 
court tells Professor Fobi, uh, you know him, Dominic Fobi, he's been minister uh, in this country before under the yeah. Kufour regime. I think he's 85 and the woman he's marrying is, the latest he's marrying is 35 or so. The, the age gap is about 50. And his own son, and I think uh, nephew, uh, were contesting it, but the court has ruled that they do not have sufficient grounds. And uh, that is the major uh, story uh, there. Any quick reactions and then uh, we can go. Maybe I'll just add this. Swollen shoe disease destroys 500,000 hectares of cocoa farms. You were talking about cocoa, so I just brought that in. That's in the New Finder newspaper. Anything yeah. to react to before we go? Yes, I will talk about for example, the uh, <clears throat> enterprise. Mm -hmm. All right. There's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. he selecting um, the love of uh, his life or himself. <clears throat> or himself. He wants to have somebody uh, to stay with. What is wrong with that? And I'm happy with the decision of the court that, hey, children, stay away. Let your father go ahead. He knows what is good for himself and all that. Yes, children may have their own concerns, but, and then they went to appropriate forum. That's the court. The court has to do. The old man can go on, uh, provided he has what it takes to maintain that relationship and it will not also undermine uh, the, 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 the fortune of what the family. Uh, once uh, that's, that's the case, I think we we'll leave them. Uh, uh, we we'll treat the matter as a private matter. Let them deal with it. Deal with it at home. All right. But I will also look at the schooling shoot disease. Um, I will urge all the stakeholders, Cocoa Board, Minister of Food and Agriculture, um, and uh, all the stakeholders in this industry uh, to work very hard to deal with this problem. Uh, because once a while uh, we experience this. But I must also say that um, the ministry has over the years been able to uh, um, deal with a lot of problems that face the industry in terms of what pest attacks and all that. They've done a lot, and that I commend them for that. Uh, you will see where they, they supply all manner of chemicals. You recall President Kufo's time, uh, cocoa spraying project, uh, projects and the rest of them. This government and then other governments have followed through and all that. So this one, I'm not sure it should be a problem uh, for them. They should be able to nip it in the back and then make sure that the cocoa industry is alive and kicking. I have always said that one day I listened to President Kufo who visited Creek and the kind of things that I saw with my naked eyes that have been done by that institute uh, using cocoa beans. Why are we where we are? that we cannot add value and then expand the frontiers of that research and make everybody happy. Giving cocoa to even students and encouraging them to patronize that. We are creating that, uh, you know, culture where they will be proud of their own commodity and then they will be able to use it. And we extend it to other commodities. I attended a program in the U.S. and then a day came that they said, showcase what you have in your country. I wore my smoke and then I felt Ghana chocolate to everybody. And I was with a toast of many in there. This is the spirit that I wanted to watch. Hoover around that industry, Coco, where my parents fought, worked in, and other parents. And today, I want to be proud of that industry. So if anything comes about and it's wrong, we will not hesitate at all. And then we will talk about it. Because this is an industry that my parents work and died in. This is a parents, the industry that other parents have also contributed to their life in there. And we will continue to defend that industry till the last uh, breath of our life. Thank you, Doc. And some of us always have stories to share. My grandfather was a cocoa farmer. At a point, I benefited from a cocoa scholarship. And I am I'm proud. Yeah, my, my grandfather did that. And at least I could benefit. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Kwame Asante, for joining this conversation. Thank you. Doc is a political scientist and director of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana. Before we go, uh, this message coming through, it says, Good morning, Ben. Uh, my dearest grandpa is 90 years today. A happy new year and blessed 90th birthday to retired Colonel Lawyer Samuel Kwabana Asante, a.k.a. Mapa of uh, Teshinungwa Estates, Coco Street. Interestingly, we are talking about Coco. Coco Street. Uh, from your wife, children, grandchildren, siblings, nieces, and nephews, we love you. Thank you uh, very much, Grandpa. Uh, okay, so 
Happy New Year and blessed 90th birthday. It's not a joke. 90 years to retired Colonel Lawyer Samuel Kwabena Asante, a.k.a. Mapa. I hear you are seated by your TV waiting for this. So a very happy birthday to you. And may God grant you many more decades to come. Yeah. Right before we go into sports, um, Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic helping us bring you this segment. And uh, they're offering prostate screening for free, fertility screening for free if you're a woman, and prostate for men. Just reach out to them at any of their branches here in Accra. Spintex opposite the Shell signboard. Kumasi Kronomabwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex. The Stakradi Anaji State Tema Community 22. Techiman Hanswe and Siaman Zama. Their call lines remain 0244. 867 or 0274-234-321. Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, the end to chronic disease. And that's how we cap it off, and uh, we'll be back with sports up next.